Thank you very much, uh, my beloved audience. See you again with uh, Mr. Muhammad Maruf. I'm the director of Global Thinker Institute. Now we have uh, two guests, Mr. Walter Kuster. Mr. Walter Kuster, PhD actually, is a philosopher, philosopher from uh, Dutch. And uh, with Dia Magatro. She is a young researcher from Indonesia and uh, she is very interested in the subject of a madness. So uh, today we will uh, conversation. We will we'll make a conversation, discuss about uh, a madness with the philosopher and the researcher. Okay. How are you, Mr. Water? Yes, I'm fine. fine. Thank you. Okay, Dia, how are you? I'm fine, Pak Maru. Thank you. Okay, how do you feel you are now meet with Mr. Water? Uh, yes, uh, first of all, I'm very honored to be here and be able to discuss directly to Dr. Kusters and also uh, to you, Pak Maru. And if, because of that, uh, I'd like to thank to you uh, inviting me to join this discussion. And also uh, to you, Dr. Kusters, because uh, you are willing to share your thought and pers perspective on madness. Uh, of course, it's very uh, glad to see both of you. Mm. Mr. Warder, how do you feel? Uh, thank you. I'm, I feel honored as well to be in this show, mm -hmm. in, in this Indonesian uh, context. It is uh, an honor to, uh, yeah, to be on this platform. So that's great. And to it is, uh, talk it to is you. The, it is the first time from Indonesia uh, research about the madness from your book. It is for the first time from Indonesia. I, I think uh, Dea is the, f the the only one I know mm. who has uh, my book, as far mm. as I know. I don't know yes. about how in how many bookshops my book is uh, be <laughs> being sold. It's yeah, it's she's the only one. It well the the English edition came out in two thousand twenty. And it is okay. yeah, spread from the US and from the UK. It is in English. And then yeah, the English speaking countries first and then, then other countries. Mm. But I don't know how much mm. translate uh, to Arabic, yeah. Interest, translate interest. also in Arabic. Translate yeah, into it Arabic. Is, it is indeed in uh, Arabic. Arabic. And that has that has been uh, in 2021. Uh, from an uh, edit a publisher in uh, Abu Dhabi. Yes. Mm. And uh, yeah, that's an honor as well to be uh, accessible in uh, 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 mm. Arabic. And I, I like that very much. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That, uh, that is make, accessible. make available in Indonesia, in, in, in uh, Indonesian language. Make available. Yeah, this would, would be great. Mm. That would be great. Okay, <laughs> yeah. it's quite of an, uh, a job to translate how. Uh, yeah, whole... we offer you to translate that Mr. Dia, I, I think, ready to translate into Indonesia. <laughs> okay, Mr. Water, uh, I want to uh, ask Mr. Dia first. Yeah, Mr. Dia, after you reset Mr. Coaster works, how did it benefit to you? Yeah, well. Uh, I've read some articles, journals, and books written by Dr. Pusters, which are inspiring. And in my opinion, he brings new perspective to understand mm -hmm. madness from a philosophical way of thinking. And uh, yeah, it's a brand new idea, I guess, especially because the idea is very well written in a systematical philosophical writings. And, mm. and then I think Dr. Kuster's work can deconstruct our common understanding on madness. As we know, in a mainstream conception, our collective consciousness believes that madness is an illness or abnormality, something that needs to be cured or something that may not happen to a normal brain or mind. And moreover, in that terms, in medical terms, uh, madness is objectified 
as a pathological condition that makes someone disabled to do their daily life activity normally. And then through the medical conception also, we've known nowadays someone who experience madness, it's help because they are suffering and so on. And to sum up, in common conception, madness decreases our quality of life generally. But uh, understanding Dr. Kuster's work on philosophy of madness gives me a uh, foundation that we must see any phenomena as it is. Uh, mm. That every experiences that happen to human life especially madness in this context, is a dynamic process of human existence. And as a process, madness must see as a part of human being relating to the world, mm. uh, something um, a phenomen phenomena that intertwined back and forth between our inner world and outer world. And uh, the important thing that I learned from Dr. Kuster is that by a, a, a to understand madness is by understanding subject who is experiencing madness, not mm. to judge them with our uh, superficial uh, understanding about madness, but wholly understand that um, however they have critical experience about their existence and that it's not only important, but also meaningful to them. Mm. And above all, uh, all of that, uh, all that uh, I mentioned above uh, gives me broader perspective about philosophical studies. I mean, I can see through uh, Dr. Kuster's work that philosophy can break through our horizon of knowledge that we mm. thought it has reached the end. But we never know until we find there is something, another reality that we never imagined somewhere mm. uh, beyond our the horizon. And I think Dr. Kuster shows me how to do that, to see somewhere beyond the horizon, but something was once hidden. We thought it didn't exist until it becomes <laughs> exist, and we perceive it as reality. <laughs> I mean, uh, in this context, is the world of madness. Mm. OK, thank you, Mr. Uh... <coughs> Madam Dia, <laughs> you know, uh, Mr. Kuster Dia is a bachelor student, but actually she is a therapist, very, very professional therapist. She used to be, I think, yeah, in uh, graduated from uh, University of Indonesia, and after that moved to Parabena University, take a philosophy course. So, uh, Dia, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, it's wonderful if we are talking about the subject that you don't understand. So I think you can ask a certain subject that may Mr. Kuster can clarify right now because the philosopher right now in here. Okay, what a subject that you don't understand? Please ask thank to you. Mr. Water. Okay, thank you. Actually, um, I would give maybe three, three things. The first one is about your concept of the plan as we um what uh, a delusional the system the plan the plan. delusional system the plan yes yeah. yes uh it's on the fourth part of your book philosophy yes. of madness mm -hmm. uh, i think uh, it's also contextual in indonesia uh, uh recently the question is um what should we do if we meet someone said that he or she had received a cosmic message uh, that they are the chosen one, let's say mm. as a prophet maybe, or Imam Mahdi uh, in a Islamic tradition, or another kind of revelation. How do we respond? Can we believe it as a reality? Or can we understand it is metaphorically real? Or I don't know, how we do comprehend that thing? Mm. Uh, uh, would would you answer it first or? Okay, Mr. Kostur, please respond. Yeah. Um, yes, it's um, 
of course, the, the, the most simple answer would be, of course, uh, it. The, I answer it in my book. As, as you know, I, I say, say many things. So I say some things here which are, may also be interesting for the for the viewer or the listener of the of this of this video um the the plan is as i conceive it in the in the in the in the second and the third parts uh the focus lies on the the a kind of of uh fluid state a kind of fluid and and airy uh state of mind where there are no borders anymore where everything is uh, yes, fluid, <laughs> and that a state of uh, chaos. Um, and in this in this fourth part, um, I would say that the 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 psychotic person who, who who has been in this chaos, which has been also been a state of of bliss and ecstasy, but also okay. anxiety, of course, because we are not speaking about only uh, funny things that happen, but also about deep anxiety about yeah well you know um and that that in this fourth uh part uh people come back uh at the in in the at normal earth again and they they try to uh to have a grip on reality and well what what i discussed with uh muhammad in the in the first part um is that um, when when you come back from this uh, chaotic state, you 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 hold on to an anchor, and these anchors are delusions, they are just things which have become um, uh, um, solidified, which which are not fluid anymore, but have become um, how do you yeah. say it? Yeah, stable, but in but not in the normal world, but new symbols. And I call this an uh, embryonic uh, stage of such a new world a plan. Mm. And that that plan. Well, when when you uh, when you open up your your mind in a well whatever that that may be, but when you open up and you uh, and you would be conscious of. Um, complete reality your own reality within the world and also the world within your reality and all paradoxes within that uh, it is such a huge uh, thing that that cannot be expressed in words and which may uh, which may give feelings of uh, ecstasy that you want to be there to expect to explore more and feelings of anxiety and then you want to to know more about it, like these people who say they are prophets, and they, so you want to to keep it, to keep it, and you you give it words, and then a plan may form, and then a plan, and which is new new division of what is outside, what are objects, and what is inside, what is my mind, what what does my mind consist of? So, and you draw new uh, new demarcations between the the basic. Well, when you are in a state of monism, everything is one. And then you come into this state of dualisms again, or pluralisms. How do, do you draw the lines? Mm. Well, the, the, the first rough lines are uh, around you know, those basic existential questions. What is good and what is evil? And the plan centers around those basic questions first of all i think about around questions of good and evil good and evil in the cosmic sense of the word what is spiritually good and what is spiritually evil for everything you know about the world and also at the same time for your personal uh, journey when you just have things around you in your room they are also loaded with these senses of uh, cosmic uh, significance and so and the yeah, so it uh, re-crystallizes uh, again, and and that that's the plan. And from and from that plan, you may develop it in all kinds of actions. And then, and then you come to uh, so-called yeah certainties, delusions, and so on. And well, well, your your question was because, because well, we, we may have a certain idea what this plan is. And I connected in my book to 
uh, yeah, to to narratives and the structures uh, of mm. narratives and to uh, myth from mythology. That's um, yeah, so the, the, those basic layers of with Jung and Eliade, those those mm. archetypal kinds of uh, worlds. So those those basic things. Well, when 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 people pop up in society and they say they have received these plans yes this is the question what what can we as a society how do we behave with respect to them um it, that that is a very very difficult question but well my my uh, from from a from a social point of view yeah I, I I think of yeah, listen and 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 interact with the person and but but often um, such such persons what what I think is not the best way is that that everything they say is translated what what you also uh, refer to there uh, is translated as this is all rubbish this is all nonsense this is mm. only an illness this is this is psychotic and what do we do with so persons who say they are uh, religiously inspired to say the least that they have uh, prophetic visions uh in the in the in the atheist in the atheist uh, psychiatry which isn't an atheist <coughs> can can i respond can i respond yes okay maybe a little bit i respond uh okay we already discussed with uh, Dea before about the standardization. What make, uh, what I say, mystic, mysticus, yeah? Mysticus or Sufi, Sufi person uh, disconnected to reality or they are connected to the reality. So uh, the problem is uh, the language as uh, uh, Mr. Water addressed, the language. So for experience per se, no problem. We have we can claim that we have a uh, experience very close to God. Yeah, have a uh, maybe met with uh, Maria or Jesus Christ or Prophet Muhammad or whatever that we admire to the to that person. For the experience itself, per se, is no problem. But the problem if they express to the language that other have a different kind of uh, language what what we call yes. different uh, what is it? language game in what can stand a statement to the philosophy audience so the if we if you think that uh, we can express it with the same language maybe we ha we can communicate like in the myst islamic mysticism okay what make his experience true what make his experience connect to the reality, real connect to the reality. So we have a, what I say, a Quran in Christian mm -hmm. Bible. So the standardization in, 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 uh, in a religion institution is the book itself, the sacred book. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. If we uh, go to the subjectivity, Maybe we don't have a language. We don't have a language, except that we accept that language in circle. Yeah, in, in Islam, maybe in Torika. So that's my, my response. Okay, Dia, do you have another question for Mr. Quarter? Because this, this, is, your, <coughs> this is your time. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, actually, this, my second question is related to the first one. Uh, I'd like to confirm that. Uh, do you have any suggestion about alternative way uh, besides medical or psychological therapy to, let's say, overcome the psychotic experience? Uh, maybe some meditation or spiritual method or any, any other thing. And uh, do you really mean on your work that uh, medical prescription or pharmacology have to reduce or totally mm. omit it. Yeah. Um, I, 
I, I have no strong opinions about the amount of prescriptions of medic med, medic medicine. That's that that in in all individual cases that that may be different, and that those are uh, complex decisions which are taken in a, in a setting between uh, a person involved, the the people around uh, him or her, and all family members, etc. Et, et so, medication, I don't know, but I think it is. It it is always good when people who who have entered this well, let's say this this Sufi world mm. and lost, yeah, uh, mixed all kinds of languages because what what you said, Muhammad, is is true that um, we cannot live only by uh, uh, language from a from a psychiatry handbook and say well. I'm having a psychosis, and I, I, so we we need language which is an intermediary between ourselves as uh, as souls, and and to relate to ourselves and to others with language, of course, and we need religious language to deal with these questions about life and death, and about the unexplainable that there is in a sense there's nothing in eternity. And everything in eternity, and how this all these existential questions, uh, we need, yeah, philosophy or religion or both, and we need those books. Um, and when you are when you are uh, so-called uh, in this Sufi psychotic uh, state of mind, I would indeed perhaps not perhaps not meditation, but especially that you work through it and that you. Uh, that you read the Quran or that you read the Bible and that you express yourself and that you make connections with those books and that you write poems mm. and that you write personal stuff about about your own life mixed with all your views about cosmic life, etc. It's it's you do not have to explain your own personal history, but about yeah. Do do whatever you want to do in in indeed in a kind of well I would say artistic way with words mm. or with paint or with other means to uh, uh, to to put what is in your mind and which is also quite uh, uh, difficult to to bear only by yourself to to put it in a uh, form outside in, to express it in uh, material in paintings and and words etc and by way of these expressions uh relate to others uh again and then that because yeah w when you are lost in this in this uh in these worlds it can be uh it is lonely and uh, yeah, you you can uh, yeah. get lost farther, and to create a kind of uh, intermediary world. Um, yeah. Yes, different yeah. persons should be involved. Okay, maybe a little bit. I respond to Mr. Uh, Walter Kuster uh, from the question of uh, Dea. I think if uh, uh, someone yeah, express their experience. Yeah. So the listener have to admit the language of the the person of that person. In that in this case, if a psychotic problem, yeah, and they have they want to go to a doctor and the doctor give a prescription, and the patient admit, and they uh, they drink they eat the prescription maybe they will get the cure but the problem is if the patient don't uh maybe don't uh, don't care or they have another opinion about their illness okay oh my illness is not from psychotic but maybe the doctor will say to me the psychotic problem so my my my, my word i want to try to say that the problem is uh, in philosophy, affirmation and negation. Okay, if in mysticism, the word should be denied, 
So the problem is how to deny uh, the self itself. But in the philosophy, you have to affirmation, have to make sense, have to rational. Okay. So the doctor here is making rational in the term of medicine, in the term of uh, in the term of uh, you know that hospital in common hospital language. But in meditation, have another language, mysticism itself. Okay, when the psychotic patient go to meditator and he admit he listen, okay, the master will say, okay, you have to negate your thinking, never never thinking, empty your mind. You have to, uh, you have to be like uh, empty water. So don't don't make yourself. You have a full of water in the glass. You don't understand, so you have to empty something like that, and the patient uh, will follow the instruct from the master. Maybe they will cure. So the problem is the language itself. The, the language is very, very uh, influenced the the disease of the the patient. That's my my response. Maybe maybe I don't know. Okay, dear, do you have another question? Oh uh, yeah yeah yeah. Uh, the last one. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Kusters, in your work, you inspired by many mysticism traditions, such as the Platonic tradition, Plotinian, Christian mysticism, uh, Eastern mysticism, like Tibetan, mm -hmm. uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, and so on. I wonder, is there an inspiration from Islamic mysticism? Uh, maybe I don't know uh, Ibn Arabi cosmological system or the reality or something. If there are mm. any, uh, how much it inspires your philosophy? Um, yes, there, there are some parts, some parts in my in my book that I. Um, have followed indeed some um, s some mysticism <coughs> which, which are Islamic. Mm. Um, yes, but yeah, yeah, but not 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 spe yeah, <laughs> not specific uh, uh, contemporary. Uh, authors um yeah yeah in in a way i um wh when i compare it to mysticism uh psychosis um in a way i have an idea that that there is a kind of universal uh mysticism and th th that is this this uh, mystical tradition from uh, mircea eliade and from uh also uh Jung, that, mm. that there is a universal core of mysticism. Mm. And when I, I tap into this <clears throat> ideas, also uh, Aldous Huxley and the like, a kind of uh, perennialism, that, yes, that perennial. all, all mysticisms and that also all religions, that they all point to something something common. That That is a, that is a sense in, in my book. And that's um sometimes i do use uh yeah ideas from a, from a hindu school uh, and some from an islamic school uh, and uh, mm. some sometimes from a christian school uh, but for me that it is that has not been uh, uh very important from what kind of tradition it is i have mm. tried to show that in that in several tradition indeed all similar questions and similar answers are posed like this ineffability like this subject object uh, conflation uh yeah and these questions about uh, transcendence uh of course and yeah well and then it is again the uh, traditions um split up a, a kind of universal uh id so i i have i have no explicit uh uh, thoughts about what kind of Islamic <coughs> <schools>. <coughs> okay maybe 
Oh, we but get your you, point. Uh, you shoot, uh, <laughs> yes, you, yes. You can connect it to, I, I think the connections are, they are there with Islamic uh, philosophy. Yes, Mr. Coulter, I think uh, you, you are right that uh, the common language that we have to use is uh, perennial philosophy. Perennial philosophy is the bridge to communicate among uh, religion, Christian, Jews, Hindus. It is a very contemporary philosophy, I think, and it is uh, useful for our discussion move to another uh, move to another uh, deeper understanding yeah uh, okay i think time is up but uh, i want uh, you mr coaster maybe have a little advice to uh, dea because they are doing research and very serious about your philosophy of madness you have an experience in your 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 personal experience maybe psychotic maybe they are also i don't know but it is good yeah it is good to yeah to stronger our motivation to research okay maybe they are give a little bit information you little bit uh, information about your research so that's why mr coaster can advise you to develop your research okay yeah please yeah uh yeah thank you um so maybe Dr. Kustis, uh would you give us a, a big picture of kind of prediction about philosophy of madness in the future? I mean, what could be elaborated about it more? How far we can explore madness? And I think it is important not only for me, but also for anyone who want to research who wants to do research on madness yeah um well it depends a bit on what what kind of aspects you are interested in um yeah first of all i would to to invite you that when when you have uh if you have uh questions you can you can easily uh, mail them uh, mm. to me, and then 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 I can think about it, and I can I can write it down. Mm. Uh, yeah, where to to look at because around my book and since my book I wrote my book in two thousand uh, between two thousand ten and two thousand fourteen. So in the the Dutch edition is already ten years old, and since mm. then, yeah, I've written these papers. They are on my website, and I. I am in a yeah, kind of network with other authors, philosophers, etc., who also do interesting stuff. Mm. And this network is also anchored in uh, the, the conference in, uh, in Ghent. And so when, when you have a questions about what is an interesting follow up to the book, uh, with certain aspects like like religion or like delusions or like whatever or certain chapter, then I can I can think about where to where to go or where to to look at, mm. and in in a quite general way, what what the follow up is of my book, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm only well I've written it and I uh, I applaud and I'm very. Uh, glad when I see that other people go further with it and go in other directions and do something with it. That that is just uh, nice to see that it is in other forms and in other uh, uh, mm. contexts. Okay, uh, I think time is up. Thank Don't you. Don't forget Very to mail much. me uh, about okay. this question. There. Yeah, I have to email Mr. Coster, so that's why he can respond you properly. Okay, thank you, Mr. Walter Kuster, uh, thank you for your time to joining our show. And Dea, thank you very much. I hope that we can uh, meet another segment, another issue. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you very much for uh, being so here. Much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Walter Kuster and Tamaru. Okay.